Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another tune-up. But before we get started, I wanted to remind you that if you want to pick up any of the cards that we talk about in today's episode, check out our affiliates, our Canadian affiliate Harry Tarantula, where you can use the promo code CMDR space mechanic at checkout, or our TCG player affiliate link. Both are in the description below. Let's check out what's in the workshop today. Premium patron Wyatt writes, This is a budget Ukima Kazur deck mainly focused on Kazur synergy with unblockable creatures and putting plus one plus one counters on them when they deal combat damage. I've only been able to win a single game with this list via an infinite combo, but I want to be able to win with the old fashioned way of combat damage. Original price for the list was $100, but it's creeped up to $125, and I'm willing to push that to $200. If you can help, that would be awesome. First of all, Wyatt, thanks for choosing to support the channel. It's thanks to patrons like you that we're able to keep doing this every week. Here, we have a partner offering from the C20 Commander Precons. This Sultai duo features the mono green Commander Kazur, a 3 3 human for 4 mana, that triggers when creatures we control deal combat damage to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on that creature. And Kazur's bestie is Ukima, a 3 mana Demir 2 2 that's unblockable, and when it leaves the battlefield, it drains an opponent for an amount equal to its power. Naturally, these two synergize very well and have some really strong potential. Kazur helps pump unblocked creatures like Ukima, and Ukima either keeps getting punchy or is removed for a big drain bomb. These two actually have a very strong showing in high power level decks, comboing with the card Food Chain. Using creatures you can cast from Exile, a Mist Hollow Griffin or an Eternal Scourge, you can make infinite mana to cast Ukima infinite times for a combo win. But that's not what we're looking to do here. We want a way to win with combat damage, and that's exactly how we'll lean into this deck build. Let's let Kazur's ability pump our unblockable creatures and see what kind of benefits we can get from reliable combat damage. Your existing list is tight, your curve is under 3, and you've got some amazing ways to really synergize with our game plan. Not only are you including small unblockable creatures like Changeling Outcast, Triton Shorestalker, and Slitherblade to ensure that, like Ukima, you're able to reliably get triggers from Kazur, but you're also including quite a few cards that get better when we get to attack. Reconnaissance Mission and Bident of Thassa are both prime utility cards here, and will ultimately be our best option for card draw in the deck at this budget level. Simic Ascendancy is a great backup win con for times when we can get counters, but might not be able to attack for a win. The Ozolith, 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 is amazing for ensuring we can ensure our counters are remaining active and in play, even when our creatures get taken out, and so that we can make better use of them later in the game. Herald of Secret Streams, along with Champion of Lamholt, mean that even if our creatures aren't inherently unblockable, a single counter can mean that they become unblockable. This all comes together to make a very succinct list. We'll keep all of these themes and goals intact, but there's a few ways that we can grease our gears a little bit better. For instance, we can take some inspiration from lists like Finn the Fangbearer or Yuriko the Tiger Shadow and keep some of our threats a little lower to the ground initially. This helps us have small, unblockable creatures we can make bigger and bigger over time thanks to Kazur and the counter doubling effects in the list already. Removing some of the bigger creatures like Nakadal Warpride that aren't inherently unblockable allows us to have nice smooth curves up to making things bigger with Kazur. If we build this like a weenie deck, again, taking inspiration from commanders like Edric, Spy Master of Trest, we can really make efficient, effective inclusions. While some of the blink effects you've included are fine for saving targeted creatures or getting an Ukima bomb or an infinite combo, that's really all they're good for. Displace and Ghostly Flicker could be replaced by versatile utility spells like Charms or Counter Spells. Our curve is low enough we'll be able to hold up mana a lot of the time. 
This also means Naru Meha is not as effective in the list, warranting us considering a cut. Currently, some of your ramp is in the wrong spot in the curve. If our goal is to jam a Kazur and get punchy, we want to reliably hit Kazur on turn 3, not cast a Cultivate or Kodama's Reach on 3. This means our ramp needs to be at 2 mana. We already have Talismans, Farseek, and Sakura Tribe Elder in the list, but let's cut our 3 mana ramp to reliably hit Kazur on 3. This makes our ideal game plan to play an unblockable 1 drop on turn 1, ramp on turn 2, then play our 4 drop commander on turn 3, allowing turn 1's unblockable creature to get bigger. Then we play out more creatures. Thanks to lower casting costs, along with synergies to ensure even without Kazur, poking in for 2 to 3 damage every turn with unblockable weenies nets us great effects. The first replacements I want to make are for Cultivate and Kodama's Reach. These are easy swaps for either Signets or 3 Visits and Nature's Lore. Again, we really want to be hitting Kazur on turn 3 reliably, and having our ramp at 2 mana as opposed to 3 is ideal. The big benefits from 3 visits and nature's lore is that forests you fetch come into play untapped, meaning on turn 2 we could potentially play another unblockable 1 drop to prep us for when we drop Kazur the following turn. Next, let's add in a few more unblockable creatures at 1 mana. Ginger Brute, Miscloaked Herald, and Spire Tracer all spring to mind. The more small unblockable creatures we have, the more chances we can have an ideal curve rollout. Gudul Lurker works very well with our strategies here too, as early game it's a 1-1 unblockable for 1, and late game he comes to the party with his own plus 1 plus 1 counter thanks to Megamorph. Now the other thing I'd like to do is ensure we've got more pieces in the list that get us benefits for poking in with damage. More combat damage triggers and more on attack triggers. This includes slotting in Toski, bearer of secrets into the list. Not only is Toski an indestructible little pest, but he nets us card draw on combat damage, much like Biden of Thassa does. Along the same line is Coastal Piracy, a straight redundant enchantment for a reconnaissance mission. With just one of these effects in play, even if we haven't pumped the team, we can ensure we'll have a full grip of cards at all times. That means we can hold up counter magic to protect the board, or sandbag attackers for after a wipe. And a card I feel would be essential to this strategy is Beastmaster's Ascension. You're going to be turning sideways, even if it's with 1-1s. This gives you inevitability to make those 1-1s into 6-6s six without needing to stick Kazur on the battlefield. This might draw quite a bit of hate from the rest of the table, but if you drop it later in the game, where you're in a position to turn it on in 1-2 turns, then protecting it with counter magic is simple. The last recommendation we can slot in is another way to make sure our little attackers do a bit more damage while attacking, and that's Throne of the God Pharaoh. If we're increasing the volume of smaller unblockable creatures in the deck, that means we're going to have more bodies tapped at the end of each turn. Even 3-4 damage to each opponent at the end of each of our turns is a great clock. For upgrades, and this may be controversial, I'd recommend extra turn spells. Temporal Manipulation, Time Warp, Karn's Temporal Sundering. Any of these options can net you a whole additional turn to attack again, dealing more damage, drawing more cards, and getting more Kazur triggers, potentially being able to cast additional extra turn spells. Decks of this archetype exist already and thrive on this tactic, making it a lot easier to get that combat damage win. There's another redundant draw on damage card we can include, and that's the recently pricey Orin Frostfang. Spikes have driven this card's cost to where I'd only recommend it as an upgrade, but it is just another way we can maximize our little attacker's value. The other thing we can look to include are classic combat damage finishers like Crater Hoof Behemoth and Triumph of the Hordes. Again, these can turn even little attackers with no counters on them into big threats, capable of ending the game. Think of these as backups to Kazur getting removed repeatedly. So here's our list. The first thing I did was clean up our mana base to remove all of those comes into play tap lands and replace them with basics. The only tap land we're left with is Zagoth Triumph, 
which I've included so that we can fetch it with Farseek, Nature's Lore, or three visits. Since we've shifted our attackers a little lower on the curve, we need to ensure we aren't stuck with a one drop in hand and nothing but tapped lands to play on turn one. That's going to slow us down in a deck where turns one, two, and three are our most important. I've also removed a few of the one-time draw effects in favor of more combat damage trigger effects. We now have six effects that draw us cards on combat damage, which is more than enough to make us very threatening, combined with all of the other on-damage triggers we have. This is an aggressive, evasive deck filled with small creatures that should never be underestimated. Overall, I think it's going to be a great way to get an old-fashioned combat damage win. Be sure to let us know in the comments how you've changed your deck, Wyatt, and thanks for choosing to support the channel. Everyone else, let us know in the comments what you would do to continue improving this list. Until next time, folks, good luck and have fun. As always, a shout out to all of our patrons. We could not keep doing this without your support, so thank you, all of you. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems, Ben Frain, Sterling Lankford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Nori, Corey Whitaker, and Snipes. And of course, our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, Matthew Chandler, Ben Shackelford, Pulsating Kiwi, Jim, Raphael Lum, and Wyatt. Thank you all so much.